Hello, Blake Rudis here with EverydayHDR.com and HDRInsider.com. And today what I want to talk about are three color corrections that you can do on your image. One of them is going to kind of uh, assess all the color in our photograph and auto-tone it for us to make sure that all the colors are kind of working with one another like they should. The next one's going to subdue any oversaturation that happens in our photograph. And the third one is actually going to invert and saturation boost our photograph. And I want to let you know that there are some actions available here as well. If you're looking at this on the website, they're right above the video. If you're looking at this on YouTube, they're going to be in the description as to where you can download those actions. So the first thing we need to talk about here is the color theory behind this and why it's working and what it's going to be doing. So I'm going to be talking about the complementary color principle. Now in the color zone system, I cover this very extensively because to me it's one of the most important things that you need to know when you're working with any photograph in Photoshop. It's not just the complementary color concepts but the color theory behind what is happening and when it's happening when you're working with your photographs. So what you're looking at in front of you is the color wheel and if I was painting and I had a really bright red color that I was working with and I wanted to subdue the saturation in it, what I would do is I would look across the color wheel and I'd say okay the complementary color to the color red is cyan. So I'd mix in a little bit of cyan to that and what that would do is it would subdue a lot of the oversaturation that the red was bringing. How does this play into what we're doing now? What we need to do is we need to find the overall color in this image. So the overall color in this image is going to be like if we took every single color that this image was derived from and we blended it together, we put it in a giant melting pot, melted all the colors down, what color would it be? So if we press Command or Control J on the background layer and then we go to Filter and go to Blur and go to Average, that's going to mesh and mush everything together. So this gives us our baseline color. So just like the example I showed before, if I was trying to subdue the overall tone of this color, I would use its complement. So if I press Command or Control I, that's going to invert that color and give me its complement. So now, how does this help me now? Actually, if I go here and go to Soft Light, and then maybe change this to about 80%. Alright, now if I look at the before and look at the after, you can see it did quite a bit. What it did was, it, it amplified the amount of yellows and orange that are in this photograph and it subdued the amount of blue that was in this photograph. So it's kind of evening out any saturation issues that I would possibly have in this photo. And if I zoom in right here onto the rocks and I look at these rocks, look at what happens when I put that soft light layer back on. It takes those rocks that have a lot of blue in them and turns them more towards this tan color. Now I remember this scene very well and I remember these rocks very well and they clearly were not blue. They were more on the tannish side. So that's how you auto color tone something. Duplicate the background, average blur it, invert it, soft light 80%. Alright, so now let's look at another spin on this. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer here. I'm going to make it a little bit larger so we can see. I'm going to delete this layer. I'm going to do the same thing. Commander Control I, oops, Commander Control J, Filter, Blur, Average, Commander Control I to invert it, and now I'm going to change this to color. Now when I change it to color, it's basically going to turn the entire photo a monochromatic scale of the color I put on top of it. It's a great way to get uh, a nice uh, sepia toned image if I was going for that look, but what I'm really trying to do here is drop the opacity to about 20%. Notice how it's the inverse of the other one. So what you see here is that it took any saturation that was in this image, let me just go and put this over top of this for now, it took any saturation that was in this image and subdued it to make sure that it wasn't overpowering. Now of course if, if you did like the overpowering saturation that was in there, you could go ahead and keep it, but I like that it kind of keeps that sunset that's happening there at bay so that those colors aren't too oversaturated. All right. So they, they, these, they look very similar in nature but they're very different because the first one is just going to kind of correct our tone a little bit and not worry about the saturation too much 
whereas this one is going to uh, look at the saturation in the image and make sure that it's all subdued. Now this is also at an opacity of 20. If you wanted to increase that to really subdue it even more, you could do that as well. That gives it a nice, um, almost monochromatic type of look with just hints of color. That's actually pretty cool. Or you could reduce it to something like 10% if you didn't want it to be so strong. So that 20% or 10% scale will be just fine for that. Now, the next thing I want to show you is if we take that same photograph, I'm going to go ahead and minimize these ones for now, take that same photograph, let's go ahead and delete this layer. Now, I don't want to know the overall color of the image and what the inverse of that is. For this particular technique, I want to know exactly what every opposite color is on the spectrum in this photograph. So if I look at the photograph and I press Command or Control J to duplicate the layer, and then I press Command or Control I to invert it, that gives me the exact opposite of every single color on my photograph. So now, if I go to something like subtract, which I don't know exactly what subtract is. Uh, if you look at the Adobe explanation of it, subtract is, it looks at the color information in each channel and subtracts the blend color from the base color. Any resulting negative values are clipped to zero. So when you look at this, um, it doesn't look very good. But if you drop the opacity down to something like 20 to 25%, Let's go about 20, let's go 25, that'll be good. When you go to 25%, what it does is it makes a pretty decent looking saturated image. So without going overboard. So it's gonna protect you from oversaturating the photograph. So if you don't like something on here that this is doing, because some things get really dark when we do this, you can put a mask on it and then you can paint on there with the color black, make a bigger brush. And let's say we just want this area to not get affected and maybe not the water to be affected. So we'll just paint on that water real quick and maybe part of these rocks not to get affected as well. So there we've got that nice protected saturation boost that is not going to be too overly uh, saturated as opposed to going into a hue saturation adjustment layer and increasing the saturation. It doesn't do the same justice that this uh, inverted saturation boost does. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this on a different photograph. So let me go ahead and open up another photograph and show you how all three of these can be used with the action that is provided for you. Let me go ahead and navigate to my image here and let's look at this photograph. So this is very green. It's very, very green. So let's look at the color tone correction. Let me press play on that. Look at how it now makes a purple image that we've put over top of that layer to subdue and make the uh, orange or the green that's that's really kind of powerful there a little bit more subdued, a little bit more attractive to the eye. Now again, you could always change the opacity on here if that's too much because these are the actions right now that I'm showing you. When I just press play on there, that's the color tone correction action that you're going to be able to download. You can change the opacity on that to something like maybe 30% if, if you don't like how hard 80% is. So now let's look at the subdued uh, oversaturation. So if something is oversaturated, we can use this reverse color idea to go ahead and uh, make sure that the colors are nice and subdued so that it's not overly saturated. Again, it's a different look than the one before. And then we also have the inverted saturation boost. All right, so to kind of get that same thing that we had going on with the water image, we can increase or decrease that opacity to our liking. And I kind of like what it did with that inverted saturation boost. What it did it was make my darks a little bit darker and uh, it, it brought out a little bit more detail there. So it's actually a pretty interesting one to use. But like I said, make sure that opacity is something around 18%. You don't want it all the way up here because that, that clips, like it, like it says in that Adobe profile, that clips a lot of what's going on in our darkest areas there. So we want to make sure that it's not clipping too much. It's kind of like, um, a saturation dodge and burn, I guess, if you want to call it that. So 
And those are three techniques that you can use, the color tone correction, the subdued oversaturation, and the inverted saturation boost. All of these are available on everydayhdr.com. You're more than welcome to download them and use them to your liking. And please, if you like this video, share it, comment on it, uh, tell me what you think, if this has helped you. Uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to hear those comments and help in any way, shape, or form that I can in any of your future post-processing endeavors. Thank you very much 